Hi there. <laughs> um, I'm back again. It was a long time since I did an update on uh, this vlog of mine. Um, I've been trying to have these uh, vlogs live, as you know, and uh, on the Facebook page. And uh, frankly, I haven't really gotten that many viewers when I've been doing this, so I've sort of lost steam a little bit. I'm thinking about it, however, to eventually start a podcast, but it will probably take a while. But anyway, um, I have some good news, and um, I am sending out a newsletter today. So if you are not getting my newsletter, uh, you could uh, send me a message through a Messenger and with your email address, and then I will add you to the newsletter as well. But it will more or less contain what I'm about to talk about uh, on this live session. All right, so uh, the first good news is that COVID-19 cases in Peru are going down. So the, like the daily new cases that we get in, in Peru is lower uh, than ever since the start, I would say. It's even lower than the lowest numbers in, uh, in June, uh, late June, early July. And uh, so that's a very good tendency indeed. I also read an article that saying that they speculate that maybe as many as 50% of the population of Peru already have been infected and so that we are getting very close to uh, herd uh, immunity and uh, that will also mean that the curve will go down uh, very very quickly and, and we should be able to see that. So. Even in spite of in spite of that um, that Peru has opened up now with international flights, I'll get back to that. It is still on a good track, so that's very very good. Hello, Tim Appleton. I, I see you you checked in here. Nice to see you. Um, we will uh, probably talk about the global birding thing uh, this week. I will sign up for that as well, but I just ha haven't had time yet. So anyway, um, getting back to. <laughs> The things that I'm going to talk about about today. So uh, we have actually started with international flights, so, and as that's really great news. They started on the 5th of October. Uh, there are some limitations, though. They wanted to start with flights that are less than four hours, so it's in the immediate area of uh, Peru. So the countries you can fly to directly to Lima right now are Panama. Colombia, Ecuador, Bolivia, Chile, Uruguay, and Paraguay. There should be five countries. So Panama, Colombia, Ecuador, Chile, Bolivia, Paraguay, Uruguay. So yeah, so that, that's really uh, great news. And we uh, hope, well, I was hoping that maybe some of you guys that are listening in from the US or the UK, that you may be able to hook up through these hubs and get to Peru that way. I realize that it may be uh, quite problematic because there is one thing that you have to have before you enter Peru, and that is a COVID-19 PCR test that is less than 72 hours um, old when you get on the plane that goes to Peru. So it means that it should be 72 hours before your flight from, say, Panama or whatever. And then the connections can be kind of tricky as well, but uh, there is a possibility. But so what I have done instead is that I am offering some uh, uh, very big discounts to people that live close by, uh, actually living in these countries. So they will actually be able to join our Satipa Road program for only five days at 50% of the cost. And uh, if any one of you that are in the US or in the UK or in Europe or Canada for that matter, if you are able to hook up to any of these flights, it's for the next four weeks. So the fall next Monday, we will start with the first tour. Yeah. And uh, prior to that first one on next Monday, there is also a weekend in Chachamayo. So you can make a little bit you can make a little longer trip that way if you are able to come down, say, on the Friday um, 16th of October. Then you can make a longer trip 
and get a lot of birding done in just uh, in just a week. And we can, of course, also sort of extend that to other areas in Peru. But what we really would like to uh, promote here now is the uh, Satipa Road area, which I, I have called it the poor man's manor road. It's not that uh, that it's poor in the sense that the biodiversity is poor there, but sort of trying to be a manor road wannabe, but rather that the costs going there is much lower and that the infrastructure is not as developed. But the birding is uh, is just as good as uh, manor road. It's a, it's extremely good uh, biodiversity, and um, they have some of these sort of same iconic species like. You know, cockle the rock, torrent duck, uh, uh, trogans, quetzals, tanagers, uh, hummingbirds, etc. You name it. Uh, so they have a lot of that in common with um, with the Manor Road, and it's also a transect from the temperate zone for 4,000 meters. There's a highland lake up there, also very close to where the forest starts, and then you can get down all the way down to Satipa, which is about 800 meters. It doesn't have any close. Uh, lowlands as such but uh, you can do a lot of the subtropical and temperate birding in that area in a, in a very short time so uh, and we are as i mentioned many times on these vlogs are commencing a project on the satipa road involving the community there they have a community lodge but lodge in parentheses, uh, the, it, the standards is not very high. Uh, so there's a lot of work to be done. So part of the work that we want to do there is to put in dividers so we can get like separate uh, well, rooms sort of with beds in each and every one. And that's also sort of a COVID response as well. Uh, secondly, uh, we also want to start with feeders in the area. So hummingbird feeders and for uh, uh, ant pittas, and uh, wood quails etc uh, it's a very interesting area many of the new uh, described species here with tapaculas and antpitas are in that area so uh, you have a few uh, brand new species to get there that's the junina antpita and the oxapampa antpita or two of the antpitas there there's also junin tapaculo there is uh, what used to be milpo tapaculo now it's called calca tapaculo it has finally been described and uh, there are undescribed birds also in the area, like a wren and a thorn bird and a very strange Zara spine tail. That sounds uh, really weird. Uh, so lots of interesting things in that particular area. And we really want to promote that now, these first couple of weeks when Peru has opened up. I realize that it's hard for anyone sort of just to get on a plane and, and go, but that's why, <laughs> that's why we offer it at 50% for the people that live in Panama Costa Rica, Ecuador, Colombia, Chile, Paraguay, Uruguay, and Bolivia. And um, if you live outside of these countries, I will still offer you 30% on the on the price. So the regular price is like $1,285. Uh, it's up to you to <laughs> calculate how much that would be with a 30% discount. All right, so uh, that's uh, that's that. Uh, let me see next on the next item here um, is about uh, yeah so how how would you how do we keep safety now uh, during the COVID-19 there's a lot of protocols in place for Peru so first of all as I said uh, coming into Peru you have to have this COVID-19 test a uh, PCR test uh, uh, with, and um, that has to be done seven less than 72 hours before leaving and it has to be negative of course yeah so um, that is uh, the first criteria then on the flights of course there's lots of regulations there you have to wear the mask all the time you have to sit still as much as possible you can move around there's a limited amount of serving uh, drinks and food and stuff there's a lot of protocols and uh, there's also uh, you can't take too big hand luggage in inside the cabin you need to check in most of your stuff Etc. Etc. So, and also in the airports, there's a lot of uh, COVID-19 regulations in place. So the travel part uh, is uh, very safe as far as I can see it. Now, and then you coming to Peru that has sort of had a re reputation these uh, last couple of months of being the worst place in South America. 
Well, not so much anymore. Since our rates are going down, we have been surpassed by, by Colombia recently. And I think, I think uh, there's a couple of other countries as well. Mexico has passed us as well. Uh, Brazil, of course, is very high. And uh, I think we have, is it Chile right, right behind us? So, and our rates are sort of new, uh, new infected versus uh, uh, cases cured is uh, is uh, negative right now. So we have more people getting cured from a day-to-day -day basis than people are getting affected, infected. That's a good thing. So uh, that's uh, that's the first thing that should uh, put you at ease a little bit. Then during the trip itself, we uh, there is a law in Peru that everyone has to wear a face mask. Uh, it's recommended also to wear screens, although that would be kind of hard when you're birding. So we will uh, treat the people inside the car as a unit, like a cell. But the guide and the uh, driver sitting in front will have facial shields as we drive along. Yeah. And uh, then uh, the group per se also is sort of a cell, but it, it, even so, uh, during all sort of public uh, exposure that we have, you will have to wear a mask regardless, right? So uh, that is the, uh, uh, the thing that will be in place all the time. Uh, secondary, we will also do uh, daily, twice, three times daily, uh, disinfecting the area uh, inside the van, the handles, etc. There will be plenty of uh, gel, alcohol gel available, uh, all food items, all the everything that is sort of touched by any of the staff will be thoroughly uh, disinfected during the day uh, at all times. So I feel uh, that, yeah, I, I feel that, you know, birding, we're out in nature all day. Uh, we're not really exposing ourselves to high risks at all. We're taking all the precautions while we're on the road. And the same thing, obviously, we will not pair up people in uh, sharing uh, double rooms together. So, but rather everyone will have sort of uh, single rooms. Uh, what we will do, though, in uh, the first week that we're running City Per Road is that we will have some tents with us. So, uh, because there are no rooms in uh, separations yet at uh, City Per Road Lodge. Uh, we hope to be able to do that as, far, as fast as possible. But uh, meanwhile, we'll put out we we'll put up the tents, like individual tents or for couples, inside the building, and then use the mattresses uh, for for the beds and 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 use the sheets, etc., uh, for for each and every one. So it will work. Uh, it will work fine, uh, e even though we have this situation now. All right, so that's uh, that's about that. Uh, if you remember, also I've been talking about condors quite a bit, and uh, we have uh, entered a contest that the uh, Minsa Tour, which is the Peruvian Ministry of Tourism, has announced uh, a couple of months ago. And uh, what we it's a three part project. I've been promoting this video. You've probably seen it already, but it's uh, it's in Spanish, and. Um, it's uh, about the project of uh, putting up a hide with the glass window for photography up at uh, Satipa Road. And uh, at, the same play, uh, at the same time, we're working with the community there to promote bird watching in general and condor watching. So they have some additional places also where uh, one can see condors really up close. So the last couple of weeks, actually, the last couple of weekends, we have been arranging for Peruvians who have never been bird watching before <laughs> trips up to uh, these mountains, a hike of 1.5 kilometers, and we see uh, condors up close. It's incredible. Uh, it's not super great for sort of high class photography because we have the light in our eyes when we are uh, uh, watching the condors, and it's really sort of low above the horizon and and many times just exactly where we put in our cameras. So uh, that is not so great. So the heights that we are uh, putting up are, uh, we will put up a feeding station for condors, very much like the vulture stations that are in Southern Europe 
all over the place nowadays, right? So we're working with a, uh, a, a Spanish guy, uh, Carlos uh, Santana from uh, Catalonia, and uh, he has a, a company called Photo Logistics. And uh, so he, he will help us out with these heights. So means the tour had this uh, competition and uh, actually they had a lot of money. So it wasn't too uh, hard to win the competition. They had over 600 projects that were uh, promoted, but we, we got our share there as well. We won. <laughs> so we have a, a financing this project, even sort of like the basis of our salaries from uh, November onwards and uh and build the the hide all all that's been paid for even bringing carlos over from spain uh that is paid for as well so uh yeah we're really happy about that and it it aligns really well also with the city road project because we can do that on the way in in and out of course yeah so it'll be like a new photographic route here in in peru in central peru that is uh, not promoted at all from from peru uh, we're a little bit disappointed about that nobody's promoting the central which is actually the easiest and the cheapest place to go bird watching from lima right you fly into lima you don't need to take any internal flights at all and uh, yeah so it's a fantastic area to bird watch uh, probably has the highest endemism as well there's more end endemics in central peru than there are in the north or in the south because in those areas, the endemism is shared with neighboring countries, of course. Uh, so, uh, yeah, lo lots of good species in the area. And that leads me into the next item on the list here. Now, our confirmed tours. So we have a couple of tours in uh, November, December and January. Uh, so I will go through those that are uh, and they are confirmed. Yeah. So hopefully by then we also have a few more uh, pos possibilities of flying. Uh, to Peru but if not if you're interested in the first one which will be like a complete central Peru trip I know that BirdQuest had a central Peru trip that is pretty much based on the ideas that I presented to BirdQuest a couple of years ago they are were not to operate that through us anymore but uh, nevertheless it's sort of our program and uh, <laughs> They uh, canceled, of course, because I was scheduled for October. But now in November, it's actually possible to go. And uh, so that trip will start on the 16th of uh, November. And uh, you could fly in and uh, do a little bit of birding in Lima before, of course, if you like, and um, a few days earlier. And uh, so try to, to go through these um, airports that I was already mentioned. Uh, however, there is already talks about uh, getting flights from Miami and from Madrid. So uh, we'll see whether those will be uh, ready to roll in, in December. If the numbers are keeping going down as they are right now, uh, I think that will be quite likely. But uh, if not, um, we yeah have a look at these uh, intermediate uh, areas which you can't fly to i know there were people from the uk that flew to costa rica so it shouldn't be too uh, difficult to do like a you know, like a lake through costa rica panama and then come to peru that way uh, so that will work uh, so the first tour is a complete uh, central peru tour uh, second tour that runs on uh, december 2 would be a complete 16 day northern peru tour so that would end on December 17. Now I've looked at the calendar for this year and I see that Christmas is falling on really uh, well Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve are on Thursday can you imagine so if you're free on Christmas Day which I think you would be you would not work on Christmas Day right and you would not work Saturday and Sundays and you would not work on uh, <laughs> on uh, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day then you could actually take only three days off from work and have an 11 day holiday. So uh, we're taking focus on that and we are offering, we already have, have a few people signed up. We are offering a 10 day North Peru, a little sort of shorter version of the 16 day tour that starts in Chiclayo and ends in Tarapoto. And the good thing about that is also that you can, if you don't have time, that would start on the 22nd of, uh, of uh, December. So you would need to, uh, 
take a few more days off before. So if you take three days off before New uh, before Christmas Eve, then you actually get 16 days of holiday altogether, and you have plenty of time for flying in and out uh, as well. But the tour will start on the 22nd. But the good thing about that tour is that we can also uh, attach a, uh, um, a five-day program, a five-day version of the same program in the middle because you fly into to uh, you fly into uh, Chaen and on the 26th the program starts in Chaen so you can fly in in the afternoon on the 25th usually yeah that's Christmas Day right but rates are really good on Christmas Day uh, actually excellent rates so uh, you fly in on uh, Christmas Day to Chaen and uh, or on or even on Boxing Day uh, on the 26th you can fly in the morning and then the program will start there and will, and will end in Tarapoto on the on the uh, uh, on the 30th. And uh, you could extend to the 31st as well if you want to. And then after the 31st, we will offer a uh, a Scarlet Banded Barbet and uh, the newly described Cordillera Azul Antbird extension. Uh, it's a great birding area. Uh, logistics there are. Uh, is our basic but it's fantastic birding area so we will we'll, uh, offer that from january 1st to january 3rd and we will be back and take the flight out to uh, back to lima so like an early afternoon and uh, you will be back you can fly back the same january 3rd if that's what you would want uh, so that's pretty much for that. You could have a really long holiday, taking just a few days off from work if you fly to Peru uh, and you go birding during Christmas and New Year's. Uh, so uh, yeah, good opportunity, especially if you're not celebrating Christmas or if you uh, just sort of hate the hustling and bustling around those dates. Um, it's not my favorite time of year. I like the family stuff, but I don't really like all that. Sort of, yeah, commercialism and all that, that stuff. So uh, yeah, I'd likely be on the trip myself. So there you go. Right, I have only one more item here, and um, oh, and one more thing I should say also. So uh, another thing you should probably think about going on a tour with us is that. Yeah, we don't recommend people that are in the risk groups to come uh, to travel at all. Yeah, so if you if you are within the risk groups, uh, uh, you know, with asthma or diabetes or you're over age, over 65, and you're not in top shape, nah, wait, <laughs> wait until you get the vaccine, okay? Uh, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't risk traveling uh, at this time. The other thing, also that I have not mentioned, I, I every country will have different rules. Uh, so you will just have to see what the rules are when you get back. I mean, there's no quarantine in Peru. So coming in, you don't need to quarantine at all. You just uh, show your COVID-19 uh, PCR test. And that's it. And whether it's the same for you coming back or not, uh, that I don't know. You don't need a you don't need a test to fly out from Peru. They've changed that a couple of days ago. But uh, uh, apart from that, uh, there may be rules for you entering your own country. And I know that in, in the UK, for instance, they have had uh, you had to self-quarantine for 14 days uh, for some of the trips outside of the areas that are sort of still considered risk areas, whatever that is. But, but <laughs> it seems that sometimes it's even more risk being within the countries that you're already in so there you go um there was one more tour i was going to mention i have some uh, people that are really into uh, bird photography that are wanting to do a north peru tour in january so that's the other thing that is also on the calendar you you can check the calendar on the colibriexpeditions.com page and the calendar will show up there straight away and and you will see those tours that are scheduled uh, so uh, that's about that. And the last thing also, I, I've been talking a lot of my, about my running. I haven't really been running that much, but at least I signed up now for a virtual marathon. So on the 15th of November, I will try to run a full marathon. I, I'm not in super shape. 
I haven't really run that much that I wanted to, but I need to have some some goal in front of me just to see whether that's possible. Uh, I will not be doing a great time, but that's that's all right. I hope to do less than four hours, nevertheless. So, yeah. All right, everyone, uh, that's about it. Um, so, uh, uh, thanks for chipping in here, Tim. Um, I will be in touch with you this week, and uh, uh, I haven't really looked into too much uh, uh, exactly what's uh, happening with the the world global uh, bird fair, whatever the name is. Uh, and I think it's, uh, yeah, well, you know that that's something that I'm keen on. Uh, our own project, the virtualbirdfair.com, hasn't really taken off that much. I didn't get too many people signing up to the uh, Facebook group. And uh, frankly, if I was going to do everything on my own, it would just be too much work. So uh, I, I've sort of put that at ease a little bit. The uh, uh, the web page, of course, is up. So uh, you find a lot of... Uh, um, Operators on the website uh, virtualbirdfair.com, but um, uh, yeah, I haven't really moved any more uh, than that. All right, everyone, thanks for chipping in. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for uh, keeping up with me for 25 minutes. And uh, I don't know when I'll do my next uh, uh, vlog like this. Uh, maybe when I have some more news. But uh, hopefully, I will see you soon enough here in Peru on one of our tours and uh, do take advantage of these uh, extremely good offers now that are coming up this next month if you have the possibility to fly and just take a couple of you only need to take five days off from work actually so to you fly in one week and fly out the next it's quite possible all right see you guys take care now bye